Alrighty guys and welcome back today we're gonna to be looking at the pig and why I put the pig in the 16th best killer spot in the game now there are only 17 killers in the game as of this current point in time followed by Legion being in the worst spot but I put pig at the number 16 I know a lot of people are gonna be thinking how can you put pig above doctor you know pigs good in certain situations I watched this guy and he's a fantastic pig there are a lot of people that are great pigs but keep in mind all my Basements are uh, basements all my bases are off the fact that there are no add-ons on any map against rank 1 survivors uh, Or really good playing survivors in the lower ranks. So keep in mind This is why I put the pig so low on the killer tier list. Okay, so currently you're gonna see a pretty Average start to the build followed by a nice twist and turn at the end. All right, so we've got ruin What does ruin do basically if you miss a skill check on a generator it goes back 5% if uh if you landed a good, sorry, if you miss, it goes back 7%. This being said, if a survivor is working on a generator, it takes 80 seconds to do a generator. At 79 seconds of completion, survivor misses a great, lands a good, it goes back 5%. 5% of 80 is 4, therefore the generator will go back 4 seconds. Other survivor misses. That being said, whenever a skill check is hit that isn't a great, on ruin all progression is paused for 1.5 seconds before it can start again so having multiple people on a jenny can really hurt when you're running a perk like ruin because one could miss a great one could land a great and it stalls the productivity if they all land great so jenny is still completed in 45 seconds as opposed to 80 which is very very fast but the chances of finding two people on a gen that are both landing greats uninterrupted by the killer it's very, very difficult unless they're on the corner of the map and the killer starts an early chase and these guys are good at landing the skill checks. Our next perk we come to is Pop Goes the Weasel. As you'll know, it's my favorite perk in Dead by Daylight. When you down a survivor, picking that survivor up and hooking him will give you a buff. For the next 60 seconds, the first generator you kick that has been worked on will regress 25% of its total progress. 25% of 80 is looking pretty freaking cute now. You're taking 20 seconds off a generator. So it could be a lot of damage and it could be absolutely devastating to verse, right? There are a couple of builds I'm going to be pointing out on the pig today, but here is the build that I recommend against really good survivors without add-ons. The next perk is called Save the Best for Last. When you M1 a survivor, it's going to allow you to recover 5% quicker. It'll also give you a token. A maximum is 8, eight tokens. Sorry, I was going to say 80 tokens. That would have been scary. Max is 8 tokens. At 8 tokens, you will recover from an M1 40% quicker. It'll take you about... 15 seconds to run after a survivor that runs in a straight line to down him straight away after the initial movement speed. So you can catch people pretty freaking quick. If he runs into a wall, if he takes a tight corner, you can really make some plays. Something to note about Save the Best for Last. If you M1 somebody through a pallet and get pallet stunned, you recover from enduring speed. If you were to M1 somebody through a pallet and get pallet stunned with enduring, you can come around and hit the survivor quicker than you would if you had just Save the Best for Last. At the same time, Save the Best for Last does have cons. If you hit your obsession, you lose two tokens every time you hit the obsession so you could be back uh, uh, you could be up at eight and then hit your obsession and go back down to six instead of have a 40 percent cooldown reduction you have a 30 percent cooldown reduction so just keep that in mind also if you find your obsession you should probably give him a free party hat on the house because of the pig's ability you might be wondering what the pig's ability is basically when you down a survivor you can put a bear trap on their head after generator is completed the bear trap will start ticking by default the bear trap takes three minutes to kill a survivor that is 180 seconds the survivor then has to run throughout the entire board and search jigsaw boxes. It sounds a lot more complicated than it actually is. There are four on the map by default. Survivor has 25% chance per box. You do have add-ons to increase the boxes. You do have add-ons to slow down how quickly they search the boxes. You do have add-ons to let the, the killer know when you're at a box, if you miss a skill check on a box, etc, etc. So there are other ways. That's the only first half to the pig's ability. The second half is ambush. Ambush allows the pig to press the control key and crouch while the pig is crouched when she holds M1, which is mouse button 1, the button on the left side of your mouse. She will then do a roar, and after about 1.5 seconds, she will release and do a dash. The dash is 160% movement speed for 3 seconds. It allows you to catch at jungle gyms, it allows you to do certain mind games. The correct way to use a dash is you dash in one direction, you do a 180, and you go back in the other direction to bait a survivor. You can get them from opposite directions, you know, you might have beast of prey, your red light does disappear while you're in uh, crouch but the second you release for ambush your red light will be there do keep that in mind something to keep in mind you can bait survivors crouch at a pallet survivors run away nine out of ten times and then 
just stand up and run after him. Like I said, a good survivor, if I see a pig crouch and go for an ambush, I will probably rotate to a different jungle gym if I know there's one nearby. If there's not, I might try my luck. She can catch you at a lot of jungle gyms in the game, so keep that in mind as well as the fact that she's very short. Amanda can be frustrating to verse when she's got a really good map. At the same time, you know, she's one of the weaker killers in the game. Also to note, while she is crouched, unlike Ghostface, she uh, removes her heartbeat 100%. Ghostface can also remove his heartbeat, but he has to pray press right mouse button. The pig does not. She can just crouch. Heartbeat will fade away as if the killer walked out of range or as if the killer has Insidious. Moving on to our final perk, we have Discordance. Discordance is going to allow you to know where multiple people are, uh, are on generators. So, for example here, I have Ruin to Stall, have Pop for the Regression. Pop's also going to let me know where I need to kick the generator the most, alongside Save the Best for Last, which is going to allow me to snowball the game. This perk can be integrated with other choices, such as Sloppy Butcher, such as... Infectious Fright, if you really wanted, I personally wouldn't take Infectious Fright on the pig. The time you down somebody, put a helmet on him, you're not going to be able to follow the other guy unless he's a real boosted banana. Um, and you've even got things like... Make your choice if you really wanted to. Discordance is going to allow you to know where multiple people are grouped. This is going to allow you to come around a corner and instead of going for an ambush hit, just stand up, walk around, get a free M1 on them. If you are stacking Sloppy Butcher and Discordance, expect a lot of free hits. At the same time, I cannot recommend a lot of Sloppy Butcher nowadays due to the fact a lot of people are running that new perk, allowing them to heal inside lockers, which is really awesome. That being said, this is the build I recommend and why I recommend it without add-ons. All of the pig's add-ons, bar her ones down here in the grey section or the brown section, do effects towards the helmet. This is another reason I put her so low on the tier board. I know I based them off not using add-ons, but basically you need to catch someone to put a helmet on the head for your add-ons to take effect. So you're pretty much playing add-on lists if you're running some of the really good shit. There are one or two options. But that being said, you've got things like Amanda's uh, Amanda's letter, which is kind of like the Wraith's all-seeing eye. Not, not all-seeing eye, the other one that allows you to see people while they're walking around. If the, pl uh, if the pig, the plague, if the pig is crouched, she's going to be able to see teammates within 12 meters. And then she's going to be able to ambush them. It also reduces available uh, bear traps for the head and removes two boxes. So basically you only have one bear trap. And you can bring an add-on to bring another bear trap, don't get me wrong. That being said, there's only two boxes to search. So they have a 50-50 chance rather than a 25% chance. But that being said, that this is the kind of build you rely on if you want to put a helmet on somebody and you want to camp one of the boxes and try your luck. I mean, what are the chances all four of them are going to get off in the one pot? This being said, if you wanted to change this build to a couple of different choices, you can. So you've got Ruin for the Stable Stall. Now, I do builds based off what I feel is comfortable and works efficient and effectively at the red ranks or at, in rank 1. And this is what I feel works very, very good. Alternatively, there are a few choices. If you did not... Actually, we'll keep Pop on here, boys. If you did not want to run Ruin... Now, the other option on the table for you is a build I've recommended on a few killers now. And I'm going to quickly show you again. So you got Corrupt Intervention. Now the thing about Corrupt Intervention is it's going to allow you to stall the game for a set period of time and not have to worry about losing Ruin in 10 seconds. It can make you play really smart, really clever, as long as you make the most of the time you have. You will always get that period of time throughout every entire, entire board or game. Alright, so there's two options for this build. This is my No Ruin Pig build. I have Corrupt Intervention to stall the game. I have Discordance to allow them to funnel towards the same generator, giving me a higher chance to see them. I have Make Your Choice, allowing me to go for a hook trade if I so choose, or to rotate back to the hook alongside Pop for Stable Regression. You will notice this build lacklusters in Situational Awareness. I have Discordance if they choose to group. That is all. Alternatively, you can replace Discordance with one other perk, which you guys have seen a lot of right now, which is Thrilling Tremor. This is going to stall and allow regression if you've kicked the generator also. So you now have Corrupt sealing a Jenny for 120 seconds. Every time you down a survivor and pick him up, you seal a Jenny for 16 seconds with a 60 second cooldown. You go Make Your Choice the one hit trades and you got pop goes the weasel make a choice could be traded out for sloppy but this build actually works phenomenally well considering it's a no ruin build the only thing you have to be mindful of is people stacking on gens and gen rushing you because you don't have discordance and you're not going to know they're there, there because you don't have you don't have ruin or you have no form of information you know you can't tell you could put on rancor but 
at the same time. We're looking at builds that are going to accelerate the pig as opposed to how weak she is. Keep in mind, if she puts a helmet on somebody's head after all jetties are powered, it does nothing. They can just run out the exit gate. You need to have generators left to get the helmets out for them to take effect. So generally, a lot of pigs just throw their helmets willy-nilly because they think they're going to get gen rushed. And it does happen more often than not. I generally like to put one helmet out, wait for a jenny to be completed, then put two helmets out, then wait for a jenny to be completed, then put one more helmet out. That's my order of generally doing it. If they all look like they're boosted bananas, I might throw all the helmets out and end the game earlier. But... That's how I generally go about things. If I'm getting gen rushed, I'll try and save one helmet or make sure I get a helmet out before all jennies are completed. Okay, so if we're going to look at some honorable mentions as well, you have things like Infectious Fright. Don't get me wrong, you can down a survivor, put a helmet on and chase after somebody if you think you could follow the scratches quick enough. But there is one other build that has been commonly seen on Ghostface recently as one of the stronger kind of tier builds. And I'm going to quickly show you guys what that is when I can actually see the perks. So we're currently looking for a perk here called Surge, and we're currently looking for a perk here also called surveillance now i have gone through this a couple of times to explain to people why this is actually really really good so basically when you down a survivor all generators are now going to be glowing white period they're just going to be glowing white if they were within 32 meters you put a helmet on that guy's head you now look at all the white generators if any of the generators for whatever reason are now yellow you can ambush and go straight towards that generator stand up and now you can leave the one on the ground have the one in the chase or you can pick the guy up and hook him and go for a pop goes a weasel on the one that somebody's working on if you know it's halfway and you want to get the regression out very very powerful build you commonly see it on killers such as ghostface right now you might see it on uh, legion also it is pretty damn powerful on killers that can hide their heartbeat as opposed to killers that can't. So then again, I don't know why I'm seeing a lot of legions run it. I'd expect to see Thanophobia, Sloppy Butcher, Thanophobia, Dying Light, but I am seeing it quite often on them too. So keep in mind that you are lacklustering in instant downs, in uh, being able to keep split pressure on multiple targets, no Sloppy Butcher, no recovery speed. There is no real power behind the build. So just be mindful that you are susceptible to a lot of body blocks by a good four-man swift, okay? Now, if we're looking at the brown add-ons, you do have a uh, slightly decrease in ambush miss, and you've got slightly reduced the charge time alongside, uh, you've got this one here, which is how long it takes to crouch. It can be really good. Recently, when I say recently, I mean a couple of months ago, the pig did just get a buff, which allows her to crouch and dash faster. Not as fast as with the add-ons, but they nerfed the add-ons, and they gave her the permanent buff just by default because they felt she wasn't accelerating where she should. So, all in all, guys, you could be running a lethal build on the pig. I don't really recommend a lethal build, but if you chose that a lethal build is what you want to do, you could be looking at something like Horner Ground and Devour Hope. I would not recommend running the three-man combo, which is Horner Ground, Devour Hope, make your choice. But if I get that up on the screen for you guys, we'll have a quick look here. So, we got Devour Hope. We've got Horner Ground. There she is. And we're looking at... Thrilling Tremor. This could be replaced with Discordance, don't get me wrong. A lot of people underestimate how powerful Discordance is. This is actually my spirit build. Uh, I, I find it very efficient. It can work good on a clown if you know what map you're going to if you're running special bottles, but at the same time, I find it excels really well on the spirit because it's hard to loop a spirit that could, you know understands how to use her ability. You can still loop a pig who knows how to use her ability, so you've got to keep that in mind. The time you're chasing to try and get value out of the build, you're probably going to get screwed. Do keep in mind something very important as well to note. A pig's ambush, which is her crouch dash attack, no longer applies on fecked hits. Yup, that means third seal will not work on a dash. That means sloppy butcher will not work on a dash. That means make your choice won't work on a dash. Devour hope won't work on a dash. So that's a big nerf to both this killer being the pig and the huntress. Throwing axes will no longer receive the, the buff from... Uh, Sloppy Butcher. So, kind of keep these things in mind. That is another big reason that I'm stepping away from this build. And by default, I recommend Ruin, Pop, Discordance, and Save the Best for Last. If you don't like Save the Best for Last, run Sloppy Butcher. And you still have a pretty solid build. Don't expect to 4k every game. It's going to be very difficult, especially if you get a bad Ruin spawn. But if you want to play the more safer side of the build, you could look towards the one I recommended with Corrupt. This is going to allow you to perform decently throughout majority of the maps. Do keep in mind you are lacking yet again in the instant downs. This being said, you could replace Thrilling Tremor if you chose to with Save the Best for Last. With uh, sloppy Butcher, I would say you want to replace either of these two. Do keep in mind, though, when you crouch and ambush M1 somebody, you will get a stack. You still do get a stack from that. If that is incorrect, feel free to um, correct me in the comments below. Last time I tested it, it was confirmed. You still do. Um, 
much like a Demogorgon. When a Demogorgon dashes, you still get it. Uh, I'm pretty sure you do, but if you don't, my apologies. That is the one bit of information I'm not 100% sure on with the pig. Uh, that being said, guys, if you have any questions about her, don't hesitate to uh, come and check into the live stream. She does excel a lot better on a smaller map, such as the game, or an indoor map closed off. I think she'd be great on Hawkins as well. Uh, a lot of people would say run whispers, run nurses and all that on her. You can, but at the same time, I feel this will work a hell of a lot better for you. Because this is going to go, it doesn't matter what map you're getting, you could get the temple and you could still perform well. As opposed to the temple with the other build, you might struggle if you lose Ruin in 10 seconds. You can't lose Ruin in 10 seconds in this map. Think of Corrupt Intervention as Ruin and it's guaranteed to last 2 minutes. That's how I get value out of this perk, a lot. Alrighty guys, that's going to be all for today. If you have any questions about her, like I said, don't hesitate to check over the uh, live stream over here in Twitch, guys. So uh, take care, and I'll see you guys.